Hey friends and welcome. My name again is Mr. Madsen and I'm the counselor at Vern Duncan Elementary. And I'm going to continue to share with you some lessons from our second step curriculum called the Child Protection Unit or CPU for short. And again the focus of these lessons is on safety. Just a few expectations first. First, I want you to be an active listener. I want you to find a place that you can listen where you won't be distracted if possible. I know this might be difficult, but um, you'll get the most out of the lesson if you can do that. Also, I want you to participate during the lesson just as if we were in the classroom. So when I ask questions, I want you to think about those answers and maybe even answer out loud. And it would be awesome if someone could watch this lesson with you and that way you could talk about the concepts that we're going to talk that I'm talking about. Let's get started. So, first, last week we introduced these lessons and we're talking about who keeps you safe. And you might be wondering, why are we talking about safety? Because we don't know how to be safe, right? Well, the reason we discuss and repeat information that you already have learned is that it reinforces that information. It makes sure that it gets stored in your hippocampus. Remember, that's that part of your brain that stores everything, like the library. And that way, if we're ever in a situation that's scary or dangerous, we go in autopilot mode, which means because we know what to do, we are prepared. I guess a good example of this would be how we practice fire drills at school, right? We practice them so that we know what to do in those situations and we don't even really have to think about it. When you, when you hear that fire alarm go off and we maybe see lights and stuff, we know automatically what to do in a fire drill and it's because we've practiced it and that way ensure that we're going to be safe. Okay, really quick, I want to review the Ways to Stay Safe poster, or the three R's as I like to call it. The first R is recognize, and she's pointing to her brain and she's asking, is it safe? What's the rule? Okay. The second R is report, which means tell an adult right away, an adult you trust and know right away. The third R is refuse and that basically means to use words that mean no and no is the word that you would use a lot of the time. The first R again is recognize. Asking ourselves, is it safe? What's the rule? And last week we, re we reviewed the eight never nevers, the never never rules. Here's that poster really quick. And we're, we're going to talk about each one again, but not to the depth that we did last week. Last week we really dug in, but I think you know them. So it's going to be a quick review. So the first one was never touch a gun. The second was never play with fire. The third, never ride on wheels without wearing a helmet. The fourth, never go in the water without an older person watching. The fifth, never use a sharp tool without an older person's help. The sixth, never ride in a car without wearing a seatbelt, and that goes for everyone. And the seventh, never touch a dog without asking the person in charge or your parent. And this relates to dogs that we don't know that are strangers to us. Because even if a dog looks friendly, we don't know how he will react. And the last one, never cross the street without checking all ways for traffic. These are our eight never never rules that help keep us safe. The second R, so the first R was recognize. Okay, the second R is report. Tell an adult that you trust right away. Okay, and this, think about Kelso. Small and big problems. Small problems we can handle on our own but big problems are scary and dangerous and we have to get help from adults that we know and trust. Even adults who face big problems have to get help from other adults that, that they trust. Big problems are big and they take lots of people to solve them. 
and that last R, refuse. Saying words that mean no. So when we say no, we want to use what, what I call a strong and respectful voice, an assertive voice. And we're going to talk more about that as we go. But it's important that when we say no, that our face looks serious and maybe our body actions, like, like he's holding up his hand and he looks serious when he says no. So people understand we mean what we say. Okay, I've got a sticky situation for you to look at and process. And no, it's not about minions, but I thought this was a funny picture, so I thought I would throw it in. It looks like they are in a sticky situation. I'm trying to change that light bulb, though. Okay, take a look at this picture. This is Caitlin. It's the end of the day at school, and it's time to go home. Caitlin rides the bus. Her friend Marissa walks home, and her friend Marissa is inviting Caitlin over to her house. Marissa's mom is there to walk them to their house, which is nearby. Some of you might have this kind of a situation. First, what's Mariska, Marissa asking Caitlin to do? Yeah, she's asking her to come over. Is that scary? Is that dangerous? No, not really, right? Okay. Think about what Caitlin should do. Okay, so think about that. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. Caitlin normally rides the bus home, but Marissa and her mom are right there inviting her over. Marissa's mom is an adult. Is that okay? Should she go with Marissa and her mom? Or should she ask her parents first? Hmm. Caitlin recognizes, remember the first R, that she needs to follow what we call the always ask first rule. And the always ask first rule is this, always ask a parent or the person in charge first, okay? So she recognizes that she's supposed to ask first. So she's supposed to ask a parent or the person in charge. She knows that she should ask her mom, right? But she really wants to go over to Marissa's house. She's been to Marissa's before, and her mom is friends with Marissa's mom, so she's pretty sure that it would be okay just to go. Since Kaylin thinks her mom will let her go to Marissa's house, is it okay to go without asking first? What do you think? If you were thinking, no, give yourself a pat on the back. You're absolutely right. Why isn't it okay to just go? Let's think about it from Caitlin's mom's perspective. Caitlin's mom is expecting Caitlin to get off the bus. So if Caitlin didn't get off the bus because she went home with Marissa, and she didn't ask first, how is Caitlin's mom going to feel? If you're thinking worried, upset, maybe angry or mad, I think you're probably right. And Caitlin's mom, the first thing she's going to do then is call the school and want to talk to the principal or Caitlin's teacher and say, where's my daughter? She didn't get off the bus. Do you think Caitlin might get in trouble? Possibly, right? So Caitlin needs to follow the always ask first rule, even though she thinks it's going to be okay to go with Marissa and her mom.
it's important for your parents or the person in charge to know what you're doing and to follow the plan that you have with them. When you don't follow the plan, people get upset and worried. So what should Caitlin say to Marissa and her mom? Think about that for a moment. What do you think she should say? She knows she's supposed to follow the always ask first rule. Yeah, if you thought she needs to say, I need to ask my mom first, you're absolutely right. So, Caitlin says to Marissa and her mom in a strong and respectful voice, I need to ask my mom first. Marissa's mom nods her head and says, Caitlin, you're right. You do need to follow the always ask first rule. Let's call your mom on my phone and see if it's okay for you to come over. Well, that sounds like a solution. They call Caitlin's mom and she says it's okay. Caitlin and Marissa are excited they'll get to play with each other. So, by following the always ask first rule and being able to refuse, say no in a strong, respectful way, they still were able to find a solution so that the girls could get together and play. And Caitlin's mom wasn't wondering where Caitlin was when she didn't get off the bus. So it's a perfect solution. All right, I have a song that I want you to hear today. It's different than the one last week. The last week was Eight Never Nevers. This is the Ways to Stay Safe song, and it's kind of catchy. Take a listen. for joining today's safety lesson and I want you to complete the flip grid activity that I've attached to this lesson as well and I hope you're having a great day. Take care. <music>